Hey, welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. So we've got an interesting one today. Um, this thing on the wall here is affectionately known on this job site as the pimple. And from a distance, it's not too bad. It's halfway passable. But as you could see in the thumbnail, and as I'm about to show you, it is nowhere close to being passable. So this area here at the bottom is what jumps out the most before we look really close. So the reason it looks like this is probably because it was treated as a horizontal joint the whole way. But when you have a curving surface, you actually have to skim it the other way and sand it the other way. Otherwise, all the inconsistencies show just like it does here. But that is just the start. So right here, we've got some crazy ridging going on. And also, they've totally lost the edge of the no coat uh, right here, you know, bubbly and chipping away. This line doesn't line up to the intersection of the corner and it also loses its sharp edge. Same thing over here. We've got another line that doesn't come anywhere close to the corner and it's built out about a half an inch past the original corner bead. So that should be interesting to look at as we deconstruct this thing. And same thing here, that line just doesn't actually go to the corner. So as you can see, fixing the pimple is gonna be pretty labor intense. And the first thing I'm gonna do is rip off all of the corner beads. And I know there's some of you thinking, with how much work this is gonna be, wouldn't it be easier to just rip off the board? Um, most of the time, I don't think that's the case, but in the case of this one, I'd say it's about 50-50. And it just depends on what kind of work you feel like doing. And instead of ripping out board and rehanging board, I usually prefer to just mud things. But wow, this is like a half an inch of mud on top of here. That's insane. Okay. So we have not one, but two corner beads. <laughs> <laughs> Why not, right? If one didn't work, just add another one. Wow, you guys, now I can see why this one was so bad. There's actually another one in the other room that was not as bad as this. I started on that one. So even if the person doing this didn't have a lot of skills taping, they were off to a really bad start just with the board job here. Can you see how unflushed that is? Like no wonder they were struggling to get those corners lining up. And look at this one. Like what is even going on here? On this one, it almost is easier to rip off the board. The problem with ripping it out today is that we already have cabinets hung it's not just like a simple rip a few panels off. It's like do a bunch of geometric cutting. I didn't bring any of my hanging tools. This is pretty much what the Festival Planex and 40 grit sandpaper was made for. Okay, so that actually wasn't so bad. I also ripped off the drywall from the inside perimeter because it was so built up. I figured once I put some fresh stuff on, it'll be a better start there. But as you can see, I actually left a lot of it on because it planes out better. When you look at the framing, you can see that it's like a quarter inch out of level. So the joint is nowhere near where it's supposed to be. It's actually planed down now to be in more or less the right spot. Uh, a lot of that kind of stuff going on here, like you can see it's, I've planed way into the drywall there. It's not as strong as it otherwise would have been if it was boarded perfectly, but once we have all of the quick set and the new beads on, it should be okay. So this isn't actually as bad as it looks. I just kind of have to smooth it out so that I can put a tape on. And I don't even want to fill everything here, because I actually want it to be kind of low so that my angled corner bead, what, the no-coat, sticks really nicely and we don't have big voids underneath like there was here. 
even just seeing it all pre-filled makes such a big difference. But what I'm worried about is this line, the high spot on the board isn't coming anywhere near that corner. So I think it might cause me some grief. We got similar problems up top on this side again, where it got shaved down, doesn't line up to the corner. The other side is not looking so bad. It actually lines up in the corner, so that one should be pretty easy. And that one, not too bad, just a little off. So I think I'm gonna just work out the finer details in the corner bead. And that'll just mean apply it with a lot of mud. So I'm gonna be using no coat because one of the first mistakes that somebody did on this when it came to the actual taping, we're not talking about any framing or boarding at this point. But one of the first mistakes they did was they put a 90 degree corner bead on this outside face. When it's clearly not 90 degrees, it's an off angle. So it needed an off angle bead right from the beginning. So that's what we're gonna do. Got a piece of no coat. I got the big one, the 450 because it stays a little bit straighter. The 350 is an easier product to work with, but the 450 definitely stays straighter. And I have found that when using this stuff as an outside corner bead, that's one of the drawbacks is it can go a little wonky, especially in the smaller sizes like the 350. And I always wipe out most of the mud, but not all of it. Because I'm not done tweaking the bead, as I've made some videos about before. I'm just trying to get enough out from underneath that it's straight enough to put my level across and see if it's actually straight or if it's wonky. So that is very nice and straight there, but because this is a because there's gonna be a TV going in here, it also needs to be level. And it's not, it needs to go up about an eighth of an inch on that side. So, and that's a fair bit, which is why I left that mud underneath still. That way we don't just pull it up and have it be totally empty everywhere. So before I wipe out the top and seal the deal, check it one last time. That's perfect. Good stuff. Well, I got the corners on and that makes it a lot easier to find out where the intersection is. But like I said, that lump there, the high point is nowhere near where I need it to be. And somewhere down there is where it's supposed to go. The top one isn't much better. So somehow I've got to get these corners on. So this is where to some degree, I just have to kind of fudge it. So I'm going to pick what looks like the easiest route, but also what won't look totally stupid. And I think that's somewhere right about here. Point A, point B. I'll show you guys this one on camera, but I might just struggle through the rest of them off camera and show you what it looks like after I tape them because this is going to be one of those jobs that just requires like a lot of concentration and probably some mistakes along the way. And, I, and no offense to you guys, but I really don't feel like doing that all on camera right here. So these do need to be mitered. They can't overlap in any way. That's probably one of the problems that happened before. I already know it's going to be shorter than that. Yeah, this is actually one of the hardest things I've ever had to do. And the irony about this whole thing is that um, a year ago, I was asked if I could do this job, if I had the time to do it, and I didn't. So they found somebody else to do it. And one year later, as they're getting close to needing this job finished, they called me up and here I am working on getting it done. It needs to terminate somewhere more like right here because it can't just terminate as a lump at the end of the corner bead. So I think we'll keep that line kind of the same and we'll bring that more like that. Yeah, this is a weird one. It's a bit of a one-off for me. I mean, who knows, maybe somebody will be like, hey, I like that T 
TV nook detail. Will you do one of those for me? <laughs> Maybe. Let's see how this one goes. <laughs> yeah, that'll probably work right there. I'll probably be able to hide that. I find it funny that I always use plural terms. Let's give that a try. How did we do? Just bringing you along for the ride. I think I'm gonna try and leave most of the buildup in the middle. Okay, so yeah, the real key is that this line has to line up with this intersection. If I don't get that, then I failed completely and utterly. Let's wipe it out. So I'm making sure that there's actually like mud under here. On the other one, you could see there was only mud under the flange and then when you ripped it off, it was all empty. So that's exactly what we don't wanna do here because as you could see with how easy it was to tear it off, it doesn't give you a strong, long lasting result. Okay, that's looking not too bad. That's good there. There's actually a corner, corner, yeah. So yeah, that one's just gonna kinda die in there. Goes up to there. We got that other one up in the corner. Goes almost all the way up to the corner. And so the main thing is that that line goes right into your corner. That's the most important part. If that doesn't line up, then it doesn't make sense. So, filling these is gonna be interesting. And what I didn't tell you guys is there's actually two of them. So this is a much bigger one, but it wasn't as messed up. So I worked on this one yesterday and I did that so that when I started filming the other one, I kind of had a plan of attack. But yeah, this one was way easier. Um, I'm gonna finish this and then go home. All right, you guys, I'm just about ready to go here. I was thinking of lots of complicated ways I could possibly do this. But at the end of the day, I think it's mostly just gonna be multiple coats of trowel work, good old fashioned hand work with the occasional bit of darbying. So I'll try and show you guys that, but I have a full bucket of quick set mixed up, which gives me about less than an hour to work with it all. So I gotta get this on the wall and not waste too much time filming. This is, you know, my favorite stuff, concrete fill, that drywall product with the aggregate in it that you can't find in the US. And I also have a bunch of taping mud mixed in with it. Could be taping mud all purpose, doesn't matter. That's just to keep it a little bit looser and to make it not dry out so much when it's going over the already dried quick set on this job because there's a lot of spots where the stuff's already dry. So as you can see, it doesn't have to be totally perfect. It just needs to be mostly full because on the next pass, all those imperfections will get filled in. Hey, so I managed to get the whole bucket of mud on the wall and it's starting to take shape. It's looking better. As you can see, I just went like two trowel widths wide. I'm gonna scrape all the lift offs off once it kicks off, but it's still wet. And I didn't bother trying to blend in these bad joints yet. Let's check out the one in the other room. So this is the one that I originally started the video with and yeah, it still looks a little asymmetrical to me. I think it's supposed to be, but it sure is looking better. Okay, so the reason that this wound up like this, my guess was that it just didn't get treated like a full surface. Either he only coated just that much of it or it was coated like this. Right? Obviously it doesn't make sense to coat something like that. So 
What we need to do is go up to the top from below it. We gotta put plenty of mud on because that won't hide if we don't get a good base coat and sand it down. Because it's between the handwork and the sanding that we are gonna get rid of that line. And the key I've found to blending something like this is to have a light touch, both when you are applying and when you're taking off the mud from that spot. Because if you go too close to the board, you're just gonna follow those existing lines that are there. Okay, so now I'm actually kind of bringing it down a bit more. I'm not taking it all off. I'm just kind of floating it out to try and take some of this excess mud off while not putting too much pressure on that one spot. Oh, just dropped a blob. Okay, so I can't go down because I can't lift it off right there because there's a little cabinet thing here. And I'm using a smaller trowel than before because we're dealing with something that has like weird convex surfaces that just isn't going to work with a big wide trowel. Let's get a moving start. We'll get it nice and smooth here. That's probably as far as we can go there. We'll get a moving start. Moving start helps not leave such horrible lines. All right, now I can start blending in down here. And I also just have to accept that I am not gonna get this perfect on this coat. This is just to build it up. We can sand it and get a nice tight skim coat on this after. We're getting close. I think we almost have that line gotten rid of. So now I'm gonna start putting a bit more pressure so that I don't leave too much over that spot. And I'm increasing the pressure right at the very end to feather it. And because of that cabinet again, I can't get there. So you kind of just got to run with your intuition. And if you don't have it, <laughs> sorry, this is going to be hard, but you probably aren't doing this anyways. Most of you guys aren't going to come across something like this. So I'm getting close. So just a little bit of handwork now with the six inch to clean off that edge and keep it crisp. I find just getting a small knife like the six inch in is sometimes the best way to try and get rid of those big lines. And when all is said and done, like I'm dealing with a surface that is not flat at all. Sometimes it's easier to just not worry about all the lines, not try and make them all into liftoffs and to just sand them. Which is right about where I'm at. And we'll probably do that very soon. I'm hoping that I can get this done with just one more coat after this. And you can clean off the edge of the bead if you want to sand a bit less. But be careful. Uh, that's good enough. I'm going to leave it because anything more and I'm going to wreck it. So getting up close and personal, we can see there's plenty of liftoffs that need to be sanded. Like I said, sometimes you just have to know what can be sanded and what can't. All the bubbles, it wasn't worth trying to get those out on this coat. This was my loading coat. We can see that the lines are pretty clearly defined. It's just going to take a very small sanding. And even down into that corner, I think we'll still be able to see that line. It won't be totally flat. I went as close to that cabinet as I could because we kind of need a level five finish on this, which is why I skimmed all the way up to the top 
into that little light box because that light casts the perfect amount of light to be able to see the difference between paper and drywall mud. And here's the one in the other room, did the exact same thing. And I'm going to let this dry for a couple of days at least, maybe even three days because with such harsh lighting, if I get any delayed shrinkage, what's going to happen on this one is as soon as all of the mud has a chance to fully cure, and that could even be after sanding and painting, you will start to see the edges of the corner trims and the tapes, like everything will shrink that like less than like a 64th of an inch. But with that harsh lighting shining down, you will literally see all of the tape lines and corner bead lines. So it's really critical that when doing something like this, that it gets more than enough time to dry if you don't want to be coming back to skim out those tape lines. So unfortunately, this isn't looking that much better yet. I mean, you can really see those lines. But from here back has been sanded. So I'm hoping after a sand, a coat, and one more sanding, it's acceptable. It's possible it could even take a third coat. We'll just have to wait and see. I'm finding that if I go over it with this to start, does a pretty good job getting most of it. But unfortunately, I'm mostly just having to do a lot of work with the hand sander because that actually gets into there. And then I'm trying to like sand more where the high spots are. until I get it sort of leveled out. And then mostly sand in this direction. And yes, I've been wearing a mask while I'm sanding. I'm just not doing it for the video right now. But yeah, hopefully it looks better when I'm done. Okay, one last chance to make this look good. Well, unless I have to skim it again, like I said, but I think it's going to be okay. I think that it looks flat enough after sanding that by the third, third, I don't know what I'm talking about. You guys, I'm tired. <laughs> I feel like this has been a long video. I know it's been a lot for me to keep track of and try and talk about at every stage. Hopefully it's worth it though. You know, hopefully there's a lot of good teaching points in this video where you've gotten something. So I'm just kind of bringing it back down to more evenly spread the mud. One up, one down. And it's bubbling like crazy right now, but I kind of feel like they changed the mud formula recently because even though I see all these bubbles right this second, I've noticed that on my last two jobs, my finished coats are going on almost as nice as if it was regular drywall mud. It's kind of, or regular drywall. Cause you know, when you coat regular drywall, it's so porous that none of these bubbles show up. You Probably can't see it, you guys are too far away. But yeah, I've just been noticing that as soon as I start actually getting onto my final passes, all of the bubbles are wiping out. I also noticed that the mud is coming out of the box a little bit wetter these days. It's not so thick and dry. So it's hard to say. I mean, they do change formulas sometimes. And I can still feel some of those bumps. Okay, finish pass. Oh, that's gonna drop. Finish. And I'll wipe out bubbles. There we go. I mean, the thinner I put it on right now, 
the more building capacity I lose, but it seems to be going pretty nice. That needs to be skimmed tight, darn it. Because I don't know if all of you guys know, those of you that watch a lot or that have done a lot of drywall work know that when I do a skim coat, I'm not trying to skim it super tight. Sometimes you skim tight if the walls are flat enough already, but if the walls aren't flat enough already and you skim it tight, then you're losing your last opportunity to make things flatter on your final sanding. So just some more little tips for those of you that are still here. You know, I'm sure a few of you have mentioned it. Maybe I already said it in this video, but this thing would make a pretty cool skate obstacle. If this exact same shape was horizontal on made out of concrete, I'd be skateboarding it. <laughs> Maybe someday. Okay, nothing left to do but a bunch of annoying passes with my six inch just to try and get rid of all these crazy inconsistencies. It's amazing how much you can actually do with your six inch. Definitely the most versatile knife. It should have a little curve in it. So I've got the curve going this way to the wall, which is why I'm not leaving lines at this point. Only if it really, only if the surface is really convex, like right there I am a bit. Okay, I just gotta sand that. I'm taking too much mud off. Just a few more little passes. One. Let's do one more right here. That's not pretty. But that is. Here we go. Okay. So the bead is just a little bit buried at the very end, but I made sure to leave a small lift off, a buildup of mud right where it needs to be. But yeah, otherwise. We're looking pretty smooth. And for now, that doesn't look too bad. See how it looks when I get the lights turned off. Okay, you guys, it is done, but I am in a rush. I didn't have time to set up the tripod to film the sanding, nothing. But I'm at least gonna show you the finished results. So let's head in and look at it. Pimple number one. Looking a lot better. You can't really see the transition on the bottom to where it changes angles. The lines are sharp and they are winding up where they are supposed to be. Like there is the occasional very slight thing I could pick apart. And if anybody takes any offense to any of it, it can be fixed after priming. Okay, how's this one looking? I mean, we still have a little bit of something going on at the bottom. Honestly, the camera is picking up those shadows worse than my eye is because the picture profile I have on this camera has a pretty high contrast. So the lights and darks really stand out. But when I'm just standing here looking at it, it's actually better than that. But you know what? Boy, is that better. And again, Corners lining up to where they're supposed to go. And they had to just kind of die off somewhere at the top on some of them. That one's not bad. It just kind of flattens out a bit. 
still goes to where it's supposed to go. That one's good. Did I finish sanding it? Yeah. I just need to see it painted, see if I need to tune any up. And that's it, you guys. Uh, I got to run. I got some physiotherapy. I'm finally dealing with this like lower back pain that I've had on and off for like three years. So um, yeah, one weekend, it's already feeling a lot better, which is nice. But that's what I got to go do. I didn't even have time to vacuum for these guys, but uh, they'll be okay. <laughs> Tapers don't usually vacuum. I do, but most don't. Anyways, you guys, I hope your projects are going really well, but I hope you're doing even better. Till the next video.